Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 3. So this episode we are going to look at putting our player in there, so we're going to start with a first person character, maybe move to a third person character depending on how the game kind of plays out. And we're also going to start looking at expanding this little area and we'll also look at some environment. So we'll probably do some mist or some fog or something like that. So firstly before we go anywhere I just want to quickly go into edit and go to my snap settings and check that they are set how I would like them to be. Um, we briefly covered it previously and I have mine set to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 and if you recall holding control actually allows for movement in the snap settings so this means that everything gets aligned quite nicely. So I'm going to have them set as one by one by one for this particular section just to show you the same kind of thing works. I'm going to take the floor here that we have as floor 001, hold control, press D to duplicate and I'm going to bring it upwards to kind of imitate a roof. And you can see it's moving in much bigger increments rather than the 0 0.5, which is fine. So it doesn't matter too much what you have as these snap settings generally. Try to keep them as either whole numbers or half numbers. So i.e. 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. Have them as anything different may muck up your alignment with the rest of the game. So I'm going to have this back as 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. The reason I brought that up is I had a couple of uh, questions asking exactly about snap settings and how we can use them correctly. So I'm going to just bring the roof down to about there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go to a quarter. We'll go 25, 25, 25. It is okay to use them if you feel it necessary, but I tend to not do that so much. In this case, it is aligning everything a bit more perfectly. So we can do it in this case, but do try and stick at least to the de the whole numbers or the half whole numbers. And if need be, you can go to quarters. Okay, so we've got a room kind of coming together here. It's looking pretty decent. Let's dim the lights a little bit on here. So let's, let's see what how we should do this. Let's change the intensity. In fact, no. we'll have it as... Um, smaller range I think let's have it as a range of a hundred and let's increase sorry decrease the intensity to 0.5 so it's kind of a bit duller in here but we'll be dealing with a bit more lighting in the next episode so let's bring in a player to walk around this area and we can do that by right clicking in the asset window and go to import package and then you need to go down to characters now the great thing about these packages is they are pre-built by Unity Technologies themselves. So in this case, we can import a third-person controller and a first-person controller. The third-person controller probably isn't great for actually making games with, but the first-person controller certainly is, because it's everything you would need within a first-person controller. And because it does come with Unity standard assets, you are allowed to use it for your game if you would need to. If you feel like creating a completely separate first-person controller, that is entirely up to you. But I think realistically, at least for a beginner, you may as well use what you've been given. So if we go into our standard assets folder here, go to characters, and then first person, and then prefabs, we can drag and drop this FPS controller onto the scene. Now all a prefab is, is a collection of objects and scripts combined together in one object so we can bring it into a game quite easily. And you can see here the FPS controller has multiple scripts attached and it has a sub object which is the first person character. So by default if you've done the same as what I have the character will kind of be in the floor a little bit so we just need to drag him up above the ground. And you can see that if we go through the ground the green lines which dictate the actual surroundings of the player, which is the collider, you can see that it kind of fades as it goes into the floor. This indicates that it's colliding too much with the floor. So you just have to make sure that it's pulled up above. So now we have a player. If we press play, we can actually look around in our scene. 
And the controls that you would use are what you would expect from pretty much any PC game that you play. Use your mouse to look around and W, A, S and D to walk. Or if need be, you can use the arrows to walk around if you want to. So here's another little shortcut that we can use. If we hold control and press the letter P on the keyboard, it stops play mode. Same also happens if we're in scene view. We can do that again, control and P, and it takes us into the game. So at this point, some people do have a little problem with the character not being able to look around correctly. It only looks that way. You can't look up and down. If this does happen to you, the easiest way to get over that is on the main camera here, delete it. It's not worth having two cameras in the same scene if we're only using one. It's just a waste of resources. So we've got our character. We've got our room coming together. What we'll do is let's expand this outwards a little bit and then we'll play with a particle system. So you'll be absolutely amazed at what you can actually do with just basic objects in Unity. Looking at this right now, yes, it doesn't look amazingly fantastic, but this is pretty basic and this doesn't look half bad. All this really is is just a cube with some textures. So a little bit of playing around and fiddling and getting it just right you really will be amazed at what you can do. So another little trick, because we're going for a kind of, well, in uh, this section anyway, it's a bit squarish, like a prison sort of. What we can actually do is if we move this wall out the way over here, you can see that the texture is compressed here. And we can change that to make it the same as this, just by expanding the size of this cube to make it kind of like a hallway. And remember, because this is on the outside of what the player will ever see, it doesn't really matter too much what is on here. As we get further and further into development, we'll do different things and we'll design walls probably in Blender or something or something similar. And we'll be able to see this kind of thing not happen, but we can use it to our advantage. So what we'll do is we'll take this wall and let's expand it on the Y axis, which is here to 10. Or is that too, do you think that's too much? That might be a little bit too much. Let's try five. Okay, so you can see here that it is kind of going on its side, but on top, it isn't so much. So a great way we can get over this is using rotation. So if we rotate it on the X going this way, so let's change it to minus 180 and then expand it to Y. To t um, so I keep that as 5 and the Z is 10. We can see that the entire thing is kind of a cube again, but the wall is the same all the way around. So if we just realign it to where we want it, so about there, we can see that it's still perfectly fine here and we now have the makings of a hallway. So I'm going to take this wall here, hold control, press D. I'm going to move it all the way down and we can see our hallway is starting to emerge and we can use this cube as well to create more of the floor hold control press d move it along to about there now for those of you who have a little bit of knowledge in, towards game development you may be wondering is having too many objects uh, going to be a bit bad for performance generally with most pcs this these days no, you're not going to have too much of a problem when it comes to performance. Even if you have, let's say, a thousand objects within a scene, it's not going to affect performance whatsoever. But if you utilize that correctly, you honestly will have no problems. So at the moment, we're only putting this together so we have a bit of a world to walk around in. And I'm going to take this floor, which is actually the roof, and we'll call that roof 001. Hold Control, press D to duplicate, bring along. And as I say, from the outside, it doesn't make too much of a difference. You can see objects colliding here, but that will never, ever be seen by the player. So I, I cannot stress that enough. Do not worry about how things look outside of the visible area. So in just a couple of minutes, we change this room into a room with a bit of a hallway. And obviously we'll expand further and further. But one thing I have noticed is this really casting the shadow we would like? 
So if we go to our light, which is currently named direction light, but I think we'll rename that. Right click, rename, let's call it light source. And let's change the shadow type to hard shadows. You can see a bit more prominent there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert a particle system. So let's give a bit of atmosphere to our game, a, bit, a little bit of foggy mistness to it. So let's go to game object and effects and particle system. Now, if we bring this into view to about there, by default, you can see this particle system is kind of it's it's crazy. It doesn't look like fog or mist or anything. But if we cleverly place it behind this wall, so bring it this way, and rotate on the X by ninety degrees, so it's kind of facing inwards towards our level. So we could probably just put zero for that. And we're going to use all this to our advantage now to create mist. So to do that. We're going to go through these settings here on the inspector panel. Now the duration we'll leave as five. We don't need to worry. Looping will keep ticked. Pre-warm means to start um, pretty much as if it was just going the whole time. So if we press play now, we can see that they don't appear until it generates them. Pre-warming means that they'll already be there. So if we press play, we can see that it's already there as if it was constantly going anyway. So we'll have pre-warm ticked. Start delay um, is grayed out because we don't need to worry about that too much. Start lifetime will set about 30. So we want it to last around 30 seconds. We want it to go kind of slow. So it needs to be much slower than what five is at the start. So let's change that to 0 0.5. Next thing, if we go down, start size, let's have this set as Let's have it a bit bigger. So let's have it as three. So you should be able to see that this fog and mist is kind of starting to take shape now. And the key to getting this just right is changing it to kind of a gray color. So probably about that, but then changing the alpha. The alpha means everything in this case. So we can see here, alpha A at the bottom. We just need to drag this down to about there. So it's kind of low. And we can see now that we should have at least a mistiness to the scene. So we can close X on that. Let's go further down. We don't need to worry too much about any of these right here. They're just kind of default. They're, they're fine as they are. Uh, emission, set as 10. 10's fine. That's a good emission. Shape. The shape we're going to use is going to be cone, and it is already set to cone. The angle... I'm going to use is going to be quite low. So let's have this as maybe, in fact, let's have this as one. So we've got a steady stream of fog. You could increase this a little bit so it kind of sprays it outwards just a little bit more, but that's entirely up to you. I'm going to have the radius as about two, I think, just to expand it a little more. Uh, we don't need to worry about the other settings here too much. You can play around them if you want. Just remember, if you ever go too far, you make a mistake. Hold Control, press Z to undo. So if we tick Shape again, we close that up. And then let's go down to Size Over Lifetime, which is right here. So if we click this little button there, turn Size Over Lifetime on, and then click the word Size Over Lifetime, we just need to click this grey box here. And you'll see down the bottom that we have a red line. If this bit doesn't appear down here, all you would need to do is drag this particle system curves upwards until you see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this all the way up here. We're not going to have too much of a curve on this, but we're going to drag this end dot all the way down to the bottom. This just ensures that by the end of the... Uh, animation of the particle it doesn't just disappear it fades outwards but we don't want it to fade out over the time it's active we want it to fade out kind of quickly so if we right click here and click on add key we can then drag this upwards to about there so it retains the amount of mist that we can see but then it also fades out appropriately at the end 
So next thing, once we have our size set, we can close that up. We have pretty much a nice fog system going and it comes down to how much you want to play around with how it looks. For example, you could have the thicker fog by changing the alpha just a little bit higher, the grayness a little bit deeper. And if you want something crazy, you could always change it to red or a deep burgundy color. We'll probably play around with that later on in development anyway. So I'm going to have that about there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the particle system and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring it over this way, rotate it on the Y by 90, and then bring it this way. And with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the start speed to about 0 0.15. So we can see that it is much slower, but it's not exactly... It should be going across a bit more, so we just need to increase our speed. Let's try 0 0.25. And I think I'm going to decrease the alpha on this just a little bit. And let's press play. So the atmosphere is kind of taking effect now. And we can see it doesn't look too bad. But this is just the simplicity of it. This is the simple things that we can create in the game. The effects that we can have. There's plenty more to do with it. And I would recommend playing around with the particle system just a little bit more to try and get what you would like. Obviously, having your light source around does kind of change how the fog will look. If you have the game much brighter, you probably won't be able to see this mist and fog anywhere. So one last thing we're going to do, if we go to window, go to lighting and then go to settings, we can see here we have something called skybox material. If we click on the little radius button next to it and click on none, click X, click X, and we can see that we have much more control about our environment as a whole now. So we could take our light source here, let's increase the intensity just a little bit, and we can see how much of an impact changing the skybox now has. So we can see it gives it a bit more of an eerie look about it. And just to close that up now, so we don't have the blue skybox, we can just take, uh, in fact, let's take this wall here and bring it all the way down here. So next tutorial, we are going to get rid of this wall. We're just putting it in here now for dramatic effect, as it were. Uh, let's rotate this on the X by 90. So it's in line. About there. Okay, so we've closed that up now. So now we can see the eeriness that is our game. And remember, it does come down to that lighting. If we were to literally turn off the intensity, we wouldn't be able to see anything. So in our entire scene now, it really does depend on the lighting and how you want it to look. But next episode, we're going to look at a bit more lighting, but with a bit of a twist. So we'll leave that there for now. You play around with your particle system, and if you feel the need to, maybe have like a weird mist down here that is a different colour, or whatever you want to go for in your weird minds that you want to make for this game. So, um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll get rid of this wall now in preparation for the next episode, and I'm going to save my scene. So next episode, we're going to look at some simple animation, which is going to involve some more environment. And we're also going to look at some C-sharp coding. So everything we do in this game is going to be in C-sharp. Literally everything we do. The reason for that is because C-sharp as a language is much more supported than what anything Unity offers. So until that next episode, guys, thank you very much for watching.